classic truck rescue so this is uh, the second video that we made visiting George it was the first time Jamie met him you just love George don't you yeah he's pretty cool he's a cool guy uh, the second video was made when we went and got our 58 GMC fire truck from Minnesota on the way back we just had to stop by and show it to George spend some time with him George was a lot more comfortable with the camera this time and let us film a lot more stuff and film him speaking more. Uh, some of the some of the storyline on this that were is part of this will be a video that we took of George explaining his experience at Iwo Jima uh, on camera, which he was comfortable with doing. And I noticed that he warmed up to the camera a lot. And we always had fun talking to him. He's got a sense of humor. I mean, he's a serious, rock-solid kind of guy. But he does joke. George had jokes, didn't he? Did we get video of him when he put his uniform on? And I, I believe we did. Oh. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he had a sense of humor and just a good heart. This is, will be CTR 192. And then we have one more video to upload of George. That will be CTR 193. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Let's get to it. Peace out. Peace. Hi, this is Rick Maylander with Classic Truck Rescue. Normally, I upload videos about us going out and rescuing old trucks and dragging them out of the bushes. I haven't put up a video in a little while because Jamie and I have been working on our property out here preparing for winter. But I do have a video that I've been wanting to work on really bad. A lot of people are attracted to the classic pickup trucks. They're very hot right now. The interest in them is only growing. But a lot of my viewers know that I like the work trucks. Big trucks that built the roads, put out the fires, tow trucks. You know, the ones that served our country and were built here in America. And a lot of people say over and over again, boy, wouldn't it be cool if that truck could talk? For instance, Homer, my tow truck. I bet he's got some stories to tell about rescues that he's been on and Smokey the fire truck. But we were on our way back from Minnesota recently getting another fire truck, a 1959 GMC. This guy right here, we call him Sparky. And wouldn't it be cool if Sparky could tell us some stories about some fires that he's put out or lives that he's saved or whatever. But the, the thing is, people are always telling me, wouldn't it be cool if that truck could talk? Well, a few years ago, a buddy of mine named Jim and I were out in the middle of nowhere in Oregon picking up a truck that I had bought. And uh, when, when we were almost to this little town that was well off the beaten track, we passed by a farm where there were a bunch of old trucks lined up and naturally I gravitated towards them and was looking at them and thinking boy we got to stop by there on the way back so we got to the small town where I bought this truck and the first thing Jim and I noticed was that the truck I bought didn't have an engine under the hood and I hadn't seen the truck before except in pictures and in the pictures that I saw it had an engine in it before I bought it so we had to work through that issue Needless to say, Jim and I came back with the truck and the engine that was supposed to go in it. But while we were loading the engine up, I mentioned the old trucks that I had seen lined up at the farm on the way into town. And the guy that I bought the truck from said, oh, don't waste your time stopping by there. That's a crotchety old guy. He's not going to sell anything to you. He probably won't even talk to you. Well, we stopped by anyway because that's what we do. And I met one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. His name's George Griffith. And he opened up his home to Jim and I, took us on a tour and showed us his old trucks. He hadn't been collecting these old trucks. George was an Iwo Jima survivor. When he came home from the war, he bought his first truck to work his farm. And he would use his trucks till they broke down and he couldn't repair them anymore and then he'd park them. So he didn't go around buying trucks just to hoard them or, or have more trucks than anyone else. He just put them in a row when it was their turn and they were done. George showed us all his trucks. Uh, we spent the whole afternoon with him. He showed us through his barn where he still had the first new cars that he'd ever purchased. He was just a really nice guy. But when he brought us into his home and we went inside, he had a wall there 
with uh, awards and uh, commendations and things like that from his time serving our country. And uh, Jamie and I recently stopped by on the way back on the hopes that he'd be home, and he was home. And he was actually out working on one of his old trucks when we pulled up. Uh, I just wanted to show him the fire truck that we'd been hauling home. When we got near to George's house, there was a moment where I thought we had driven past his house because I didn't see all the old trucks on the side of the road. And my heart actually sank because I thought, well, I didn't see his trucks because maybe he's not there anymore. George was old. You know, he was in his late 80s the last time I saw him. Uh, but he was there, much to my relief, and it made me think, you know, uh, how many Iwo Jima survivors are still out there or, or are veterans from World War II, you know? And if you know one, go see them, you know, hang out with them. Anyway, Jim and I spent the day with George and uh, uh, we've got a lot of cool video from that and him talking about his old trucks and everything. And we also went back later and took him lunch and had lunch with him and everything. But I was just really relieved to see that he was still there. So my point is, I collect these old trucks from the 50s because I have a lot of respect for the big trucks, the work trucks that helped build this country. And people are always saying, well, it would be cool if this dump truck could tell stories. We've used this dump truck to bring 120 loads of gravel into our property. My girlfriend drives this. She loves it. It's her favorite truck. What do you think about Bully? What do I think about Bully? Yeah. He's the shiznitty blam snip snap snappy. Yeah. Anyway. But uh, Bully used to be a highway department truck up in Washington. He probably built a lot more roads than we've got out here. But I was thinking, I, I love these trucks and, and I respect them because they still run and drive and do the job that they were meant to do. But these trucks from the 50s were built by guys like George that came back from World War II. They got jobs in factories and turned out stuff like this. And I'm impressed with the quality of these trucks. This truck was built while George was over there in Iwo Jima fighting for our freedom. And it's old. So is this one. I bet it's got some stories to tell. And it's old. Some people don't get the old trucks. They say, Rick, it's outdated, it's old, it's crusty, and it's kind of funny looking. But I love them. Our country's kind of become a throwaway society where we don't appreciate the things that got us to where we're at. And we just leave them in the weeds to rot away and then send them off to be crushed and shipped to China. But I've got a soft spot for the old guys. Sometimes I do get the story behind the truck. Sometimes the trucks talk to me through the people that have held on to them and cared for them. This truck a woman held on to for two years because it was her father's truck that he started his business with. And she gave me a, wrote me a whole letter telling me what he used the truck for, telling me about her father's accomplishments and everything. And she could have got more money than she got from me for this truck, and she could have got rid of it a lot quicker. But she wanted the truck preserved, and she wanted to be part of the collection that I'm putting together. So it's cool when I can know the story behind the cool old thing. But George is a very cool old thing, and he's a part of America. And he made America what it is. He was ready to sacrifice his life. It was his job to go over and secure our freedom and everything. So what I'm saying is, my trucks can't talk to me anymore. George can. If you know someone who's a veteran and has served our country, and you have some time, go by and see him. I would like to put together a run for next spring where a whole bunch of my crazy friends that also like old stuff with wheels on it get together and go out to George's place and maybe have a barbecue. Because the last time we left, we'd been driving for nine hours that day, and we were tired. We were only a couple hundred miles from home, and we wanted to go, but George kept saying, oh, you just got here. Well, we hadn't just got there, but it's hard to leave when somebody's asking you to stay like that, and it makes you want to hurry up and get back there. So I'm just saying, if you know somebody that served our country and you got some time, go by and hang out with them, listen to them, spend some time with them make them happy. What'd this guy do? This truck right here is a 1955 GMC. It was used to build the first telephone company in Washington. I bought it from the grandson of the man that bought this brand new and had it specially equipped to drive down the road, drill holes in the ground, pick up telephone poles, plant them in the ground, and make a telephone company.
Anyway, enough about trucks. So a lot of people, when I get off the subject of old trucks, they get a little upset. They say they tune into my channel just because they want to see old trucks and old truck rescues. But I think George deserves a little mention here. And uh, so I'm going to do a really long video about George, include all of his trucks and, and his story and everything. But uh, as I was going through some of the footage that I have of George, I came across one where I'm reading a citation that he got from the government that he has framed on his wall. And when we were there, I just read it because we were filming and uh, I wanted to make sure I didn't mispronounce things and, and offend him. And, uh, but I didn't really take in what I was reading when I was reading it while we were at George's house. Going over the video again and looking at it, I, I had a chance to listen to it and understand, I could picture what this guy went through. So what I want to do is I want to make this video I want to introduce you to George, a man I have a lot of respect for. He is a true American hero. And this guy told me uh, when he went over there, he said, we didn't know when we were coming home. We didn't know if we were going to come home. He said, all I knew is that I had a job to do over there, and I was there until it got done. And they did get it done. And they, they fought hard for it. But I just want you to listen to what this man actually went through because he has actually been in tears telling me about how many of his friends right beside him didn't come home. And I think our country needs to get a little more in touch with what made us who we are. You know, I'm not going to get into a bunch of politics and everything, but America is great. And, uh, but I agree that it can be greater. And I think we, if we're all honest, we can agree with that. Anyway, enough of my bump and my gums. Let me introduce you to George and uh, God bless America. I know it's a little loud, but uh, we got a little bit of extra time. We're almost home, and uh, I have a friend out here named George. George was at Iwo Jima, and he likes old trucks. And I really wanted to share Sparky with him and, uh, and just hang out with him and maybe introduce him to you guys because he's a real cool guy. And every time I drive by here, uh, I feel bad about not going and see him, but his place is like 30 miles off of the main highway, and it's kind of a, a gamble whether he'll even be home, and he doesn't answer his phone, he doesn't have voicemail, he's just got the old phone that rings and rings and rings. So we're going to go see if George is home, if he is, I'll show you some cool trucks and uh, introduce you to Aunt Jamie to an American hero. Oh wait, peace out. I forgot uh, a little something I need to warn you about, honey. What? George's handshake. Uh, Is it like round grippy? Uh, it's, it's like uh, putting your hand in the iron claw of uh, the Industrial Revolution. I don't know. This guy's got a grip. I swear, I have never met a man that grips your hand like George does. And you got to look him right in the eyes, dude. You got to grip back. Not too much, though, because you can tell if he turns that puppy up. This guy's been farming out. I think he's got like 300 acres or something. And this is a farmer. This shake. is a farmer here. He might shake. I, you let me know about that because I'm curious. I've, I've wondered about that. But Jim and I both agreed uh, the day we met him that, that he had the firmest handshake that we had ever felt in our lives. It's a little bit intimidating, but he's a good guy. So. He shakes my hand really soft. What a gentleman he is, really. Oh, he'll probably steal your heart. He's a nice guy, this George. We'll be back. Seen I know, along I the way, it. and all the cool people we've met. Ooh. 
Uh oh. We went past George's place. Uh oh, this ain't good. Why? Uh. Maybe not. Crabs branches? Keep going. Oh man, I sure hope we did. Why? Uh. No, we didn't. I don't think we did. Because I would have seen his trucks if he was still well, there. You were looking at me filming instead of looking oh. there. You gotta go see your old people when you can. You, you just, if you have the opportunity, and today we had the opportunity. We tried, what, about six months to a year ago before oh, we stopped by? Oh. Two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. But uh, I still see there's his old, uh, what do they call that, a white star or something. He's real proud of that one. The I green see. one? Yeah. I yeah. That's it's a, that's a big rig. So slow down and just you're just going to pull to the right and off to the shoulder. We don't want to drive right on his property. He's not going to remember me, probably. And, uh, that's a harvest. Yeah. Yeah, he's got some cool stuff. Wait till you see. All right, um, I'm gonna put the GoPro on my helmet and hope George doesn't shoot me because I'm gonna look like an alien walking up on him. Maybe not, huh? All right, that's good, honey. As long as you're off the road. All right, we're gonna go uh, see if George is home and if we can talk to him. He's got a stinking what? Lincoln back there. He does have a Lincoln. His is a town car. Oh. Yeah, and I like his town car too. He's got some cool stuff. We'll be back. George Griffith. Go ahead, uh, show, show Jamie. That was on the front of the East Oregonian and a neighbor framed that and brought it to me. Yeah? yeah. And then the two of us, there, together as my dad and I when I was home on furlough. This one right here is you and your father, George? Well, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 45 is when we took Iwo Jima. And the, the picture up above there, that's, <clears throat> I just haven't got the strength I used to have. I know, I can tell. I, but your story's important, George. <laughs> and uh, uh, you're, I gotta let you know, I have a lot of respect for you. Well, and, thank uh, you. Uh, uh, the freedom that you fought for to, to get us. You, you make it possible for us to live the life that we live. I did what I was told. <laughs> what? I just went where I was told and what, did what I was told. Yeah. Anyway, as I said, that was it. On the front of the East Oregonian. And that uh, flag raising up there is the... Is the uh, is that the actual flag raising at Iwo Jima? You told me that. What? I want to hear your version of the flag raising at Iwo Jima. Well, uh, that's uh, yeah, that's the monument in Washington. Yeah, D. that's what I want to see. You just went to Washington D.C. recently, well, right? Spring before last. Yeah. Yeah. And tell me about that. What? You flew to Washington, oh. D.C. with some other veterans? Well, yeah, I've got some pictures here. Because I don't want to put it in my words. I want to hear it in your words, oh. like you told me before. Oh, well, I just told you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I went to boot camp in January of 44 in San Diego. And then I went to Camp Pendleton after boot camp. <clears throat> and then we were there until July, and then we went to Camp Tarawa, and that was a camp in Hawaii. And uh, that was for the whole division, 5th Division. And uh, then we went to Iwo Jima, and then we came back there, and then we went to Japan for occupation duty. We were there about seven months, something like that. <coughs> but anyway, that upper uh, picture there the, uh, of the flag 
That was the first migrating. At Iwo Jima. Yeah. Right? What did you say? You were part of the the actual force that actually yeah. captured. See, I'm, people don't know I'm that. the 5th Marine Division. 5th Marine Division. And anyway, uh, there's another story about that. I was laying in a shell hole, I don't know, probably about a quarter of a mile from the top of Mount Suribachi. And uh, I was watching, I was looking at the top of it with a pair of field glasses. And and uh, there was a guy came up behind me. He said, "Give me those field glasses. I want to give them back to the lieutenant they belong to." And I just turned around and handed him that, and looked back up there, and that flag was flying. <clears throat> there was six guys in that flag detail. Just to kind of give you a little idea. Of The severity of that battle. There were six men in the first flag raising, and then the other one was about four hours later, they put up a bigger flag so it could be seen farther. But anyway, out of each of those crews, there were three of them that were left on. It was pretty serious. It was a hard day, a day most people will never experience in their uh, lives. I can't even imagine what, what that was like for okay, you, but, yeah. but I am grateful. Well, I am grateful to you and everybody that was over there for what you did. Well, a, lot of, a lot of people really love you guys for what you did for our country. Well, I Seriously. We were warned and had to finish the war, and that's all it was to it. When we went overseas, I, I was talking to somebody, well, I guess it was on that trip to Washington, D.C. He was saying, I was talking about the length of time in the, in the desert now, and, and uh, he said, well, we don't fight wars like you used to. <laughs> mm. When we went overseas, it's, the thought never crossed our mind to come back till the war was over. That's what we were going for. Uh, for just uh, for however long it took. You got it done, though. Well, you got it done. Best, huh? yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there was. Took seven thousand men to take that island. Five thousand naked and seven thousand men alive. About 20,000 wounded. I even got wounded. What, what, how'd you get wounded, George? I, I got a, a slice right across that finger right there like that. You can see this car for a lot of years. Yeah. But anyway, I cut it on a sea ration can. <laughs> <laughs> You dodged all those bill bullets in the can got you. <laughs> that's uh, great. I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> pretty bad and good, right? It's a pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We just have a lot of respect for you, sir. And anyway, that upper one there, I think it's kind of an issue to that. Uh, has a presidential unit of citation. Our, and our, our, uh, I was in the first platoon of the, of the 5th Marine Military Police. It's, it's about five lines from the bottom over here. Do you mind if I read that? Well, that's what it's for. <laughs> that's what it's for. All right, George. It says, uh, the Secretary of the Navy, Washington. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting this Presidential Unit Citation to Assault Troops of the 5th Amphibious Corps Reinforced United States Fleet Marine Force for the service as set forth in the following Citation For extraordinary heroism in acting during the seizure of enemy Japanese-held Iwo Jima Volcano Islands February 9th to 28th, 1945 
landing against resistance, which rapidly increased in fury as the Japanese pounded the beaches with artillery, rocket, and mortar fire. The assault troops of the 5th Amphibious Corps inched ahead through shifting black volcanic sands over heavily mined terrain toward a garrison of jagged cliffs barricaded by an interlocking system of caves, pillboxes, and blockhouses commanding all approaches. Often driven back with terrific losses in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat, the assault troops repeatedly hurled back the enemy's counterattacks to regain a hold, lost positions, and continued the unrelenting drive to high ground in Motoyama, airfield number one, is that right, George? Motoyama, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, captured by the end of the second day. By their individual acts of heroism and their unfailing teamwork, these gallant officers and men fought against their own battle fatigue and shock to advance in the face of the enemy's fanatical resistance. They charged each strong point, one by one, blasting out the hidden Japanese troops or sealing them in. Within four days, they had occupied the southern part of Motoyama Airfield Number 2. They stormed the steep slopes of Mount Suribachi to raise the United States flags. Is that how it's pronounced, George Suribachi? He can't hear me. To raise the United States flag, and they seized the strongly defended hills to silence guns commanding the beaches and ensure the conquest of Iwo Jima, a vital inner defense of the Japanese Empire. That's page one of two pages. And then the, uh, the following assault troops of the 5th Amphibious Corps United States Fleet Marine Force participated in the Iwo Jima operation from February 9th to 28th, 1945. And that goes on to list all of the list uh, all of the people that participated in that. But one of them's right here in this room with us. And uh, he's an amazing man. And I'm glad he's here today. And I'm glad we pulled off the highway, aren't you? Yes. Oh. That's your actual uh, uniform from World War Wow. Two. Uh, actually, that was just issued to me to come home in. Oh, we didn't have but it's still from 1945, mm -hmm. right? What? It's still from 1945, though, right? Well, 46. Four, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Imagine your other one got a little dirty, huh? Mm -hmm. Your other uniform probably got a little dirty. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, we just... We just turned them in before we went overseas. Yeah. 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 Mm. Got these just to come home with. That's the fifth grade, fifth division insignia. What do the stripes on the underneath Spearhead mean? Division, they call it. He's what? got a hat down here that says Iwo Jima Survivor. I don't imagine there's too many people walking the planet that can justifiably wear that hat today. <laughs> what do the other um, badges on your uniform represent? What do you think? What are your other, the other... Um... She wants to know what those stand for, George. Oh, oh I don't know. <laughs> oh. That's, that's the unit citation. And that's for one, the, the star in that one is for the Battle of Iwo Jima. Oh, wow. Uh, the arm piece. That's his rank in oh. um, division. Mm. Oh. oh! This is something somebody gave me. And then this one here is what they gave us when we went on that trip to Washington, D.C. You went to Washington, D.C. for what, George? Just for a trip. Yeah. Uh, there's an outfit called Honor Flight, and they take uh, 50 veterans. Oh, less than. Every, well, twice a year. One in September and one in, in May. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah? That was quite a trip. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, it, it, it just went by so fast. You had a hard time realizing where you were and what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I just went along for the ride, whatever it was. You want me to put those in there, George? Yeah. Here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, George, I was hoping we could take a peek at your trucks. What? You know I'm a truck nut. What? I was hoping we could take a peek at your trucks. Oh, yeah. Janie's a, uh, this is, I love this girl. She's my other half. Uh, we have about 50 trucks now. My business is called Classic Truck Rescue. And uh, now I go around and I get the old trucks. And if they're missing parts or whatever, I put the parts with them. And if I sell one, I sell it to a guy where he has everything he needs to build it. And then I'm also putting together a collection of the old work trucks, you know, like we have a dump truck, tow truck, now fire trucks, because everybody usually goes after the little pickets, but I like, you know, these trucks are what you guys built. I'm not saying you worked in a GM plant, but I know the guys that came back from the war built some really nice solid stuff, and they built these trucks I got, so I'm trying to collect a bunch of them and save them and preserve them oh, to show great. people. Yeah. That's good. That's what we got when we're Chairman of the Summer Festival Award. Over there in Pendleton. Uh, Pendleton yeah. yeah, we just went through there. Uh, oh, your wife, Lorene. What? Yeah. That was you and your wife, Lorene. Yeah. Yeah. yeah is, uh, also. How long were you and Lorene married? George, if you don't mind. How long have we been married? Uh, yes. 65 years. 65 years. That's quite a while. It's <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're always saying you're goal oriented. <laughs> oh, the 2016 edition of this publication is dedicated to George and Lorraine Griffith as we thank them for the many contributions they have made to our county. And that's on the uh, Morrow County Chronicles mm. from the Morrow County Historical Society. And George, how much property do you have out here? Because you have a lot. I know that. I know you had a lot more, though. But um, Yeah, I don't have near as much as I used to have. Okay, but George, when you came home from the service, you bought this farm, right? Well, I leased it from a family. And then I eventually bought it, but it was a long, long time. And how many acres did you buy when you bought it? Oh, I don't know. I know. This was out there. <laughs> it didn't even go all the way down to the highway, though? Yeah, the, well, it don't go all the way to the highway. I have a place, or had a place down there, but my son stole it from my Dad, yeah, I remember him telling, I was telling Jamie about that, or I told Jamie about that. And your son stole that from you, and is that where they put the wind turbines? Well, didn't even do that. Oh. He, he sold it. He sold his uh, outfits and thought they were going to put in a, a wind outfit, and then the wind outfit went south, and and, and he, he sold most of the rest of it to yeah. Three Mile Canyon. Uh, over for a million dollars. I never got that. should have been it. George's million dollars. Uh, <laughs> he, he's done away with a couple million dollars down there. I can't even figure out what he's spent it for. Anyway, anyway. Sit, sit down over here. The way I do it, I just move this chair over here so I can hear you. Well, you can't really see it when it's upside down. Okay. Okay. So she can see it. All. Oh, okay. So this was your trip that you made to Washington, D.C.? This is him here. That's the guy that made the book for you? What? That's the man that made the book for you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he's the one who's renting my land. Oh, he's renting my land out here. Oh. All right. And where's that at? Well, I have to see. Hey, let me read this wall. 
They fought together as brothers in arms. They died together, and now they sleep side by side. To them we have a solemn obligation. Admiral mm. Chester W. Nimitz. They named a boat after him, didn't they? A big boat. <laughs> yes. I think this was uh, the World War II monument. Yeah? They had several, several wars there that they've got different monuments for. Uh, and this here, he and I went to, to school together. In fact, we went for the first grade together. Then we moved yeah. down here, and then we went through high school together. It's yeah. good to have a friend that long, huh? Yeah, that, that's quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> there were three of us, and just this summer, one of them died. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been, we've been right here together all, all that time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, it's, uh, this is the Pacific Theater. And this is the, this is part of it. It is a big thing. Yeah. Quite extensive. We'll look that up on our computers and see where you went. The price of freedom. Freedom Wall holds up 4,048 gold stars. Each gold star represents 100 American servants personnel who died or remain missing in the war. The 405,399 American dead and missing from World War II are second only to the loss of more than 620,000 Americans during our Civil War. Wow. Yeah. Freedom is cheap. Freedom isn't cheap. <laughs> no, it's not, sir. And I'm not making a joke out of that, but that was an understatement. We, there's a lot of what people that, that re appreciate what you've done. It's the Marine Corps seal. I grew up in Oceanside, California. Oh, yeah? Right near Camp That's Pendleton. Where, yeah. Uh, so, George, I'm assuming this is... Uh, oh, uh, Camp Pendleton. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that a ring around that fountain that lists all the major wars. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The major that battles. Was, that was the marina section of it. The Washington Monument, the Lincoln Monument. Well, you really went and saw the town, didn't you? What? You went and saw everything at Washington, D.C., huh? Oh, yeah. They, they took it around on tour buses. That was nice of them to do that. Yeah, that sure was. The whole thing, there were four days and they were costing a cent. That's beautiful. Well, it cost you. <laughs> it didn't cost you money, but you earned it, certainly. And this is where George actually was. But really, <laughs> well, I like this, uh, what this says right here. It says, they who seek to establish systems of government based on the regimentation of all human beings by a handful of individual rulers call this a new order. It is not new, and it is not order. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. Now there's a bunch of things like that in the walls around. Yeah, that's some good wisdom right there. Yeah, some of the... <laughs> oh, it looks like uh, Aunt Annabelle. I miss, miss my little dog. I haven't been home for nine days. We've been... Uh, George, we just went all the way to Minnesota. 1,700 miles to get that fire truck. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm a fool. <laughs> I'm crazy. Well, maybe that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> This, I guess this is just pictures of what me there again. Yeah. Yeah, and the, that's a fellow that was traveling with us and looking. Hey, there's uh, mm. old George. 
packing. Oh. Is that the type of rifle you had? That's, yeah, that's, yeah? A, that's an M1. M1. Boy, they were good rifles. Boy, they were good rifles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you had to trust your life yeah. with it. There were, you see that Marine there? There were a bunch of them. They put on a, a kind of a demonstration for us. And then they, after they got done, they came, split out and went around and talked to the various uh, ex servicemen. And, and that was the one that came to me and showed me his rifle. Yeah, that was nice of them. That was really nice of these people to take George and do that. Oh, they treated us like kings. You are king, sir. Yeah, well, <laughs> I got, actually, it was kind of embarrassing when we went into the airports, you know. They, you know how big the airports are in Washington D.C. and Chicago. Well, not in Chicago, but in Portland and Washington D.C. And, and as we went all over through this long, long trip uh, where we were, uh, the people were all just spread apart and clapping. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then there was there was one place where the, but when we got back to Portland, there was a bunch of Portland police stood and saluted us oh. as we came back in. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for our law enforcement team. Mm -hmm. What you got there, George? Oh, what's this? Yeah, we saw that up here. Yeah. Can I touch it? Sure. Okay. Yeah, there we Oh, because he was there. Yeah, that guy was there. Wow. Holy cow. Wow. I, that was quite a surprise to me. I just found out from Clint that not very long ago that... Uh, Is this the Cortland police salute me at the airport here? Oh, that, yeah. That, yeah? That's... And we were, we went down the other side of there, and uh, that's where they were standing. So yeah, we got a salute from uh, Portland's finest when they got home. Hmm. Meant a lot to you, didn't it? So it was sure a surprise to me. <laughs> I never knew people even knew we had a war. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put this back on your okay. table. Oh, thank you for sharing that with yeah. us, George. All right. right. There's, there's one picture. I'm trying to see where, where it is. Then I get quite a kick out of it. I'll see if I can find it. All right, George, you mind if we step outside and uh, have a sip off our lemonade and uh, charge our batteries? Well, I was going to let the cameras charge up. And then George says, hold on, i got one more thing to show you. And whips out that. <laughs> it's a 19. That's a. That's for World War II, right? He wants to get his uniform in the background there. <laughs> I don't blame him a bit. I'd brag a little too. So that's a Japanese issue. This is a, this is a 25 caliber. 25 caliber. What's it called? Jap rifle. Jap rifle. <laughs> well, George doesn't have to be politically correct. But uh, so they issued that to you as a souvenir, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but they gave you what was the other rifle they gave you first that you traded for this one? The first one was a thirty-one caliber. Yeah. And it looked more like a rifle. Yeah. And I wanted something ridiculous like the Japs were, so I <laughs> traded it. Yeah. That's beautiful. How many acres was this farm originally? Oh, I don't know. Between three and four thousand, I guess. Three and four thousand acres? That, <laughs> that's a that's a ranch. Well, that, that's there. That I just own own nine hundred and seventy five acres there. The rest of it would be LM. It went up the top of that mountain. There. That mountain is 9,000 feet high. Wow. And the place, 
actually the place there was about 5,900 feet. And then over, part of it was over in Nevada and it was 6,000 feet. <laughs> That's pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then this here, see that peak there? Over here? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's Disaster Peak. Disaster Peak? Yeah. Why'd they name it that? Do you know? I have you know. Idea. All right. Jamie has a horse also. We just got her, well, uh, about a year ago, got her her first horse she's ever had. <laughs> yeah. And I know you got some stuff over there that she would probably yeah. enjoy seeing. I'll show you something that you probably have a pain. <sighs> oh, wow. He roped no. cattle. Is that for roping cattle? Yeah. Lasso? That's a raw hide reality. Uh, they, they use, when they use them, they swing a real long loop and, and they're real long. But those are made by hand. Uh, wow, that's uh, a lot of work, huh? Yeah. That's what they had in the Old West. Look at how they got it so it slides and everything. There's a lot more to that than you would think. Yeah, and she, do they wax them? Do you uh, wax them? Well, something is, is brand new. Oh, but yeah. They, they tell me to, to run them through liver instead of liver, like the meat. Yeah, liver. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why, but anyway, that's a, that's what it is. I'll put it back. I'll put it back. Did you did you have your favorite ranch horse? What? Did you have a favorite ranch horse that you? Oh yeah, I had a real good horse. I had one of the best ranch horses in the country. Yeah, what mm -hmm. was his name? Ranger. 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 Yeah. Awesome. Georgian Ranger. <clears throat> Out on the range. Yeah, I had him for a long time. He finally he got old. Mm. That's a monument in Washington, D.C. Yeah. With me standing by. You see anything peculiar about it? No, I don't see it, George. I'm in there twice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's been put in there, huh? Yeah. Someone added you know, that? Uh, Clint took a picture of it, but he didn't, he didn't get the light in it. And there was a guy I know, I was showing it to him, and, and he said, well, I had a couple of pictures, of one of them showed the, the top of it, and <clears throat> he said, well, I'll take them and put them together. So he put them together and matched them, and there I am in it twice. Yeah, that's neat. <laughs> that's what I think is funny. Yeah, what's this? Oh, that's a picture of the Morgan School in 1934. Are you in there? Yeah, yeah. I was in the third grade then. Mm. How old are you now, George? What? How old are you now? Ninety-one. Ninety-one. Yeah. You know, lightning hit that building about eleven o'clock one night and burned it down. Really? Oh. Not when they were still using it for school, but yeah. After it had been closed years, down. A lot of years later, but. Mm. I put it in that way so you can see that in there. <laughs> okay. okay, well, we'll go. Awesome. Huh? What about the Lincoln? Okay. Yeah, what's wrong with it? I don't know. Hmm. 
It's got the ranchero front end. <laughs> it's got the mark front end, but taller. Oh Boy, yeah. That is a whole lot of car right there. Needs a top. The eight track tapes. I always like these Lincolns with that old tape window back there. Yeah, that's the town car. That's the one. Yeah. This I remember. And this I mean. Yeah, he said, oh yeah, he remembers me now. He's like, no, I don't remember it yet. I said, oh, this is the one I like. And he goes, oh yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of these is, is that rear end to be put underneath it. Uh, the fender's bent in, uh, driver's side rear fender's bent in on this truck. I remember that from the last time we were here, but it's super solid. Uh, say, what year is this one, George? It's a 52 Chevy. Uh, half ton, long bed. It's got the original radio. In, in the dash. That one's a 6400. Let me see. Yeah, I got a customer who needs a hood for one of those. It's got the radio in the dash. It looks like a really solid truck. Not not the five window, but still pretty cool. Grill's in real nice shape on it. It's a really solid truck, so I'll make him an offer on that. That is an old wagon, isn't it? That, that might be something that went down the Oregon Trail right there. Holy cow. That's some old school stuff right there. <laughs> yeah, that might have been... George! <laughs> you know anything about this wagon? Well, I know I brought it from that place down below. Oh, yeah? <laughs> And then there's a whole row of trucks up here. He's going to show us the engine. That looks pretty complete. Oh, it is. I was, I was using it for a truck wagon. I was out the field one day and I just turned around to come home and it wouldn't run anymore. And I finally towed it in and I found out that what's it, I thought it was broken. Uh, axle or U joint or something. And all that was the matter with the, the main drive shaft where it comes out of the transmission. About that much of it would broke off. Huh. And that's all that's the matter with it. But it, it was running. <sighs> what do you think you'd have to get for this, George? Oh, I don't know. What, what do you want to give for it? What do you want to give it? Yeah, I would. I'd give twenty five hundred for this. Spotlight on top. Okay. All right, let's look at the, the other stuff we got. And what? Well, I don't have room on the trailer today. No. <laughs> I got a fire truck back there, but I think that's a fair, fair price. Sure. All right, and you got a title on it, George? Yeah. Okay. I want to show Jamie this row of trucks you got up front. What? I want to show Jamie the row of trucks you got up front. Oh, All right, come on, Jamie. What the heck? What's that? What? What is that? It's a bale fork. Yeah. You run that up over a bunch of bales like that. Put in those hooks there. And, and oh, pick up a whole bunch at the same time. Yeah, you get eight or ten. Look at this. Gotcha. Look at, he's got a backhoe on. Do you still use this thing, George? What? Do you still use this? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Just now, I won't sell it all. Okay. That's what I was asking. <laughs> Look at that. George, you still got that old Pontiac in the creek? Yeah. 
this. You remember me now? <laughs> this is a book. Look at you this. You remember it very nice. <laughs> What do you use this for? Ask the man. George makes a lot of his own stuff, honey. Wait till you see his shop. I up and saw my head in the snow and I couldn't back up. So I put this on for traction. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a pretty cool bucket, though. I like it because it's a one-ton four-wheel drive. Um, but didn't you say this one needed an engine or a transmission? This the one? Transmission and the motor. The motor was worn out, and I was looking for a motor, and I was coming down the road one day, and the transmission was worn Yeah, you see something you like over there? <laughs> I told you. No, they're just a bunch of dukes all lined up. <laughs> and that, is that Grandpa? Oh wow! Is that's not Grandpa, is no, it? No, that's uh, that's Wally Washington right there. But look at the gym. Yeah. I told you. Brakes or clutch that we're smelling. What? Brakes or clutch that smell on that. I can smell either the brakes or the oh. clutch or oh, it got the hot. Transmission. Transmission? Yeah. Yeah. The smoke was just rolling out of the transmission. Oh. I drove it from down there. But parked beside that other truck. I drove it up here and the smoke was just rolling out of that transmission. Oh, I love the Mack trucks. Yeah, he's still registered until next year. <laughs> Here's another five window. Got the deluxe cab, five window. What about that one? You're not attached to that one, are you? What? You're not attached to that one, are you? No. I'll show you about that one. <coughs> on the cab corners, bottoms of the doors, or the floors. This is amazing. Got all the deluxe stainless on the inside and the outside. It's dirty, but mm. that'll polish right up. Chrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened with that one, I was, you and I were driving out along the field one day, and I just quit going. About a 73, 74 Impala coupe. Doesn't look too bad. A little bit of Bondo.